Okay. So for today, <clears throat> we want to improve and finish uh, this exercise just for learning uh, the last bit uh, of uh, web technologies that we need. Uh, if you remember last time we wrote uh, a JavaScript application, okay, where uh, some text in an input uh, element was automatically copied character by character into the next uh, uh, text area, text um, element, okay? We did this by inserting into the web page a very small script uh, that, if we remember, uh, had a function that just copied the text from one element to another, and this function was uh, attached to a given event on one of these uh, HTML elements. So the story is that the user does something, the user actions fire some events into all the HTML elements that have been touched by the user, some of these events may be uh, intercepted, caught by some event handler, that, uh, and these event handlers are registered with a set of on something attributes. And this on key up means that every time I press a key, this function gets called. And when the function gets called, usually it does two different uh, steps. The first step is uh, getting some information. Why I'm being called uh, and what are the current, uh, what is the current state of the page? And the second step would be most likely modifying the content of the page. We, are, we wrote this, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, in raw JavaScript. What we, the first step we want to do now is to convert it by using uh, the um, jQuery library. Hmm? which would be more or less, for, for something so simple, uh, more or less the same complexity, but uh, um, for, for, for doing something more complex, the capability of jQuery of processing many elements at a time is, uh, um, and of finding the right elements into the uh, DOM tree, into the HTML uh, tree, uh, it's uh, very appreciated, <laughs> and uh, but because in the in basic JavaScript, the only thing that you can do actually to navigate the tree is just to get one element at a time. Hmm? And uh, it gets, uh, say, very boring and, uh, and tiring to do. So uh, the first thing uh, we also want to do, and we'll learn how to do that in, in jQuery, is to auto-register some event handlers in the JavaScript code itself. Uh, we say that uh, it looks strange to have a very clean HTML file. We pulled all the style issues out uh, thanks to CSS and thanks to Bootstrap. We pulled all the logic outside uh, thanks to the templating mechanism, so there's no code. But there you are registering an event here. So if you ever need to change the functions, the, the event tender, to attach this event tender to another element of the page, it will take you uh, a job of modifying both the JavaScript code and the HTML code. So it would be better if we could just uh, uh, leave the HTML alone and, uh, along and uh, have just a plain description of the page and uh, let the um, JavaScript code register its own handlers. And it's easy to do in JavaScript. It's even easier to do if we use jQuery. After all, the on key up event is just an attribute. So we could find this element and add an attribute with one line of JavaScript code. One of the issues is uh, when can we do that? 
the question is, when is uh, JavaScript code executed? The JavaScript code is executed right now when in the place where we are including the script. So if we look at the HTML page as a whole, at the source, we see that we have the HTML, and then at the end, we load all the scripts. Uh, there is one risk, though, that uh, if we are, so in this script, uh, we could add one, send one instruction here, not in the function change, but outside the function, by say, okay, we, we find the HTML element, element and we register the functions there. One risk is that uh, the script uh, is executed when the browser reaches this statement. But uh, there is no guarantee at this point, we are still processing the page, there is no guarantee at this point when the script is, is being executed that all the DOM, all the nodes corresponding to the HTML elements have already been constructed and initialized. So usually what they want to do is uh, to wait until the browser finished loading the page, at least finished building the, the DOM, and only after, only after we should uh, register our own handlers into HTML elements uh, that only at that point we are sure they are existing, initialized, and valid. So I cannot yet register an event handler here. I must wait until the page is loaded. So let's do that in, uh, with jQuery. Mm -hmm. Actually, for register, before registering an event handler, I need to wait another event. I need to wait until the browser tells me the page is ready. Hmm? Uh, so let's try to do this uh, with JavaScript instead of, uh, uh, sorry, with jQuery instead of plain JavaScript. Hmm? Uh, by the way, if we look at the source, we see that the jQuery library is already included. So the Flask Bootstrap module, besides including the Bootstrap functions, also includes its own private version of the jQuery library. So we don't need to do anything special. jQuery is already there. It's ready for us to use. So we go to the script and say, we want to do something when the page is ready. Uh, the, so register event renders when the page is ready. So, ready. So, as being loaded and the DOM is complete. How do we do that? Uh, we use the general, uh, say, mechanism offered by jQuery. Find an element, do something with it. In this case, we are asking the page to be informed when it's ready. So the page is represented by the document. So the document is the root node of all the page. We call the jQuery function on the document. In this way, we are the jQuery function will return me a jQuery object pointing to the root of the document. Okay, it's a common usage of wrapping an object, a DOM object, a JavaScript object with the dollar with jQuery function, and then we'll turn that element into a new element with superpowers, with more method, more functionality. It will be a jQuery object wrapping the basic functionality of the element. And so we ask to the document, please, uh, I want to register an event handler for the ready event. So the document generates a ready event. We want to register our own function for handling this event. So I could register with the name of a JavaScript function. Uh, startup, for example. 
And then I can define a function called startup that does stuff. And this is okay. Uh, but, okay, and doing stuff would be registering event tenders. I don't write it like this because I want to introduce you a, a strange idiom in the JavaScript uh, that's very common in JavaScript and in jQuery. Uh, it's, uh, in many cases, we don't want to write functions just for the purpose of referencing them from an event handler. So we want to create this function in line. Okay? So what we can do, instead of declaring a function and coming up with a new name for this function and referring to that, we just put the function there. And uh, the syntax for doing that is uh, of constructing a new function here. So uh, this is a strange syntax, or it's not strange at all, is the syntax for defining a function, normally. You can insert this same syntax whenever, wherever an expression is expected. What it does, it actually constructs, it builds a new object of type function and returns the reference to that object. The only difference is that here we have a name for the function because we give the name, uh, sorry, we store the reference to this new function into this name. So the name will refer to the function later, so it can be, the function can be called by name. Here we don't need any name. We just use the, the object returned, the object of type function, as a parameter. So it's like uh, if you're doing a, a, a new variable a equal b plus c. You have an object, in this case maybe a string or whatever, and you give a new name, a new reference for that object. Or otherwise you can just, uh, let's say, for example, call the ready b plus c. You are building an object on the spot and using the reference to that object as a parameter of that, of that uh, call, function call, of that expression in general. You don't care giving it a name, okay? The same can be do, we can do here. It gets a bit weird because uh, this function needs to have a body. So what is the value of the expression a plus b plus c? Okay, we need to write it. So we can write a body here of this function inside the braces we write this code. So at the end, we will have the closing brace for the inline anonymous function and the closing parenthesis for the function call of ready. So this code is executed when the function is called. Anonymous, the inline function That is, when the ready event is fired by the document object. So the code is not executed right now when the interpreter goes through these lines one to eight. It just reads this code to store it away as an anonymous function. When the event, the event will trigger, maybe in one millisecond, maybe in 50 milliseconds, then the function is called, and this call inside the braces is executed. So it's a sort of delayed executive. I write it now, but it will be called later asynchronously. Asynchronous means I don't know what I will be doing when that code will be called. I don't have the control, the timing control over when the code is executed. Okay, so what should we do here? 
we should register an event handler on the input text. So again, the jQuery way, find the element, and the element is, uh, I find it by using CSS syntax. So right now I have an, an element that is called input text ID, so I use the hash. So I find the element and I do something with it. Doing something is registering an event handler on uh, or on key up or key up. What is the name of the event handler? Sorry, I don't remember. Let's always use the documentation. Uh, events. So if all the registering events and event tenders in the jQuery documentation is under the events, and in particular there are keyboard events, okay, there are key down, key press, and key up. So we need to register the key up element. The key up function in, uh, in jQuery has always two versions, one with a parameter and one without. The one without a parameter tells generate this event now. So simulate a key up event. The one with the parameter, so uh, in other words, call the handler. The one with the parameter registers the, angle, the handler into that element. Element or elements, uh, depending on the jQuery, how, how many elements were selected by the jQuery part, well, the selector part. So I want to say, on the input text, I want to register the key up. So I need to have the handler function. Maybe this changed. Change is the event handler. But again, we use the same pattern here. Do I want, do I need to write another function and just give it a name just for using it once in line nine here? No, I write the handler in line here. So it would be a function whose body will be the event handler for this specific event. Starting to get weird. We are three, level, three levels deep. Did you see the Inception movie? We will go farther. Uh, so this code is run at key up in the input text uh, cell. So everything is read by the interpreter at the beginning. This part is delayed until the document is ready. When the document is ready, actually I execute this statement, register the event handler. But don't execute yet the code of the event handler. The code of the, or the body of the event handler will be delayed until the event happens. The key up event on the input text happens. jQuery is like this, you nest it. And uh, uh, what do we do here? Well, we get the element and we copy it. For, so for the, we get the input text, we can do anything. So we are not bound to manipulating only the same element that caused the event. You could do anything at this point. Right now, we just need to take the value. So there's a val function. It's not called value, but val, val. Uh, I hate it, but uh, they didn't use, in this case, the, the, the same name of the HTML attribute. And so we store this 
into some variable, and we just need to copy this variable into the output text. So we fetch the output text, by id and set its value, sorry, dot val text. All the element fetching that is necessary in plain JavaScript is just uh, already handled by jQuery. And dot val is the corresponding to the value attribute of the input. And this, so you see that this, we have the same syntax, an attribute uh, without, an attribute function without the parameter returns the value. With the parameter, the same function with the parameter sets the value. Okay? So uh, let me delete this because it will uh, give syntax errors. I can leave these functions here because it's just a function declaration does no harm. Uh, just agree with me that this, this function will never be called. Okay, I deleted from the index HTML the on key up event. So there's nothing that will call this function. To be sure, just to, then no trick, no magic, uh, never, never called. Before deleting it, just rename it. So. I change the name, it can, it can be called, okay? So what we will see will be the effect of this. You see that uh, we are nesting an event handler inside the document ready function. Uh, there's a sort of a closing pattern there. Closing brace, closing parenthesis, semicolon, closing brace, closing parenthesis, semicolon, and so on. So J, jQuery tends to have a tail of uh, such closing stuff there, trying not to get lost, okay? Okay, let's try it, will we? So in saving the template, saving everything, the web app is already active, but I need to reload it because I wanted to reload the script. So reload it. Okay. And okay, of course, we, we have no Trying surprise, it's still working. But right now it's working with a, an event tender that has been dynamically attached. So if I add 27 input boxes to which I want to attach an event tender, I just need to modify the CSS selector and the same will apply to all of them, okay? So we have the power of, of uh, and uh, I don't need mainly, I don't, lead, I don't need to modify the HTML in order to give dynamic behavior to the page. What I need to do is uh, to have a well-structured HTML. It needs to be well-structured with divisions, with classes, with IDs, and this will be useful for the CSS, for the layout, for Bootstrap, and for JavaScript, in particular jQuery, to attach to hook, to put hooks onto the behavior of the page, okay? So, this is easy, but that's nothing. So, uh, we should add some behavior here, reverse and flip or whatever. So we could do it, uh, for example, again, by improving our event lender here. So between the extraction of the text and the modification of the output, we could check whether for example, the reverse uh, function is, uh, is uh, which a box is selected or not, okay? Um, I need to know the name of this checkbox uh, to find it with jQuery. I called it, uh, I, did I give it an ID? Yes, reverse box was the ID. So I can check whether, uh, this, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, this is the window. I can check if I can find the reverse box as a property called checked. Of 
course, I'm writing this fluently now because I spent one day looking for the right way of getting the, the, the attributes. You need to forego for and browse the documentation and see the attributes, okay? So this is the way of uh, querying a checkbox uh, asking, are you checked or not? Hmm? There, there are this change in different uh, JavaScript versions, so you find different examples. Uh, some say attributes. Actually, there is a difference between attribute and property. I just mentioned it very briefly because actually the problem is only, only appears for checkboxes. Uh, the attributes is the initial uh, re, um, reports, the initial state of the checkbox, whether it was uh, checked or not in the HTML page, because it is the attribute that is written in the HTML. The property is the runtime value after user modifications, okay? So this is what we want. So if it's checked, then I need to reverse the text, okay? Like with strings, to reverse the text. Um, I can write a for loop or whatever and uh, learn how to manipulate string. Just for the moment, let's just uh, say, let me just add some, I can reverse, okay? Just to, to check whether something changes, right? Then we can play with the algorithm, but they want to do something else. Um, so the idea is that if I write hello, it's okay. If I click res uh, reverse, nothing changes because right now the event handler is only attached to a key up on the input text, not to, to the changing state of this. But if I go there and I just move the cursor, sorry, I write a key even if it doesn't modify anything, I see that this checkbox has been, let's say, uh, taken into consideration and the string is actually reversed. What you write, what do you read there? The hello reversed. Hmm? And uh, if I leave out the reverse, I will go back to the initial version huh? so I can write it. So this is the, the, the general principle. We can do here, we can do whatever manipulation we want to the HTML page. We can add elements, change images, mm, delete, uh, hide, show parts of the page, changing the classes of elements to change their behavior, their, their layout, what do we want? Inside here we have the full control on, depending on the user actions. The only limitation right now with JavaScript and jQuery that makes things easier is that we can only work with uh, what we already have, the DOM. We can do nothing that was not already in the DOM. Reversing a string is easy, it's just three lines or two of JavaScript. But imagine some different computation or some other information that you need. You would need some computation on the server to complete the task, right? What I want to do here is when some user action happens, get the event handler and let or give to the event handler the capability of asking the server some piece of information that may be needed for me to modify the page. If you are clicking on a refresh button in your uh, mail messages, well, the JavaScript on the page that runs in your browser needs to check with the server, did new messages arrive or not? So at that point, in after your click, the JavaScript needs to talk to the server without changing anything in the page, just behind the scenes, okay? So the JavaScript wants to talk asynchronously with the server. 
How can this be done? This can be done with a strange technique that is called AJAX. The basic technique is AJAX. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Actually, we won't use XML. We will use uh, JSON for exchanging data, but AJAX was invented long before JSON came of uh, normal usage. And uh, uh, actually, what gives us is the capability of, from a JavaScript code, of checking with the server. Sending data, receiving data, sending query, receiving query. Just in, like you do with the REST. Maybe the server is offering a REST interface. You send some JavaScript, you get some, uh, sorry, you send some JSON, you get some JSON back. So how can we call a server from JavaScript code? There is a problem, though. Uh, if I use the here, just imagine having an HTTP call here. Imagine an HTTP client, something, like you do in Python, asking to the server something. What happens is that while the HTTP call is in progress, all the user interface will get blocked. The JavaScript inter uh, interpreter is single-threaded. It does only one thing at a time. So imagine the user is typing quickly. When he types a letter, it takes 200, 300 milliseconds for the HTTP request to reach the server plus the processing time plus the travel back time. It's not acceptable to block the user interface every time the page needs to check with the server. So we need to do this in an asynchronous way because there's a user waiting on the, on the user interface side. Hmm? So this is uh, the design of a uh, special JavaScript object that is implemented in every browser since the last 15 years. And it's called uh, XML HTTP request. It's a long name for a strange object. By the way, the name is totally wrong because uh, we are not using it with XML. Uh, we are not using just for request, only for also for responses or whatever you want. You can criticize it. It's called like this. It's the basic JavaScript object that gives every JavaScript program the capability of talking asynchronously with the server. How does it work? Uh, the object uh, handles a request through a sort of a state machine. It goes through different states. Uh, this uh, object, HTTP, XML HTTP request, Start from, uh, okay, you create the object. If I, we can uh, do a new statement on the object, and it creates a new object in a state called unsent. So the request has not been sent yet. Then you call the open method, and uh, uh, you open the request, but still not sent yet. You can with, with the open method, you specify the address, the calling address. So what URL should I call? And if you can, why in the open state, you can also set some uh, headers in the request, some the body, so modify, build the request object in HTTP. At one point, the, the important moment is when you call send. Calling the send method on this HTTP, XML HTTP request object, XHR object, XML HTTP request, um, then the request is being sent. So the JavaScript code sends a request to the server. The send method doesn't wait for the response. When I call send on the object, the, ob the request is sent, and the send method returns immediately. So basically, on the JavaScript code right after send, I can do nothing useful. Because on the, right on the JavaScript code right after the send call, uh, I'm fairly sure 
that the request has not got through yet. So there's nothing I can do. I don't have the reply yet, the response yet. Huh? So there's nothing useful I can do. But the life cycle of the object will continue. The object will uh, wait for the server to respond. At one point, the server will receive all the headers. And then the server will start receiving the body. And finally, the server will uh, receive uh, the whole body. And so it goes from a loading state that may take long milliseconds to the done state and done. Right? And this is, takes time. So the only way of uh, getting hold of the response, of knowing what the response is, guess how, is to set an event handler on the state change of this state machine. I tell the JavaScript uh, XHR object, OK, go, send the request, handle the request, but please inform me when your state changes. And when the state changes, in particular when I'm reaching the done state, because only at that point the, the response is ready, and the, bod the, the body of the response in particular is available. Hmm? So actually, by the way, these states have a name, but they're always called by number. So the, 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 the state that we want is state number four. Let's see some example. Uh, uh, yeah. OK, one piece at a time. Uh, we, I, I will go quite quickly here, because uh, then we will use the JavaScript version, so the jQuery version, which is simpler. But just to understand what happens at the basic level. Huh? So for doing this remote call, we create a new HTTP XML HTTP request object. OK, uh, this is the code for creating it in a cross-browser version, but uh, we let uh, all the dirty work uh, to, j to jQuery. And actually, if I want, for example, to call with a get method, a server uh, and the method time.jsp on the same server, I can just uh, write this. The open specifies the initial parameters, the method, get or post, the URL being called, the address, and other parameters that may be synchronous or asynchronous. That's a full signature that we can see. So we initialize the call and then do the call, actually, send. As I said, the, if there was a, a statement here, this statement will get executed before the call as a chance to return. Hmm? That's why I said there's nothing useful I can do here at this moment. I, don't, I can only return to the user. OK. What I want to do before sending the object is programming the object by telling it, please, whenever the state changes, let me know. I register on ready state change. I'm registering an event handler on the ready state change event. Ready state change is the name of the event. Fires whenever the state is changed for that specific XHR request. And then you're registering, you see the same syntax, a function with this body. So an anonymous function, event handler. But usually this event handler checks whether the state is for. Because if I'm, sorry, if I'm going from open to header received or from header received to loading, the event tender gets called anyway. Every time the state changes, the event tender is called. But we don't have anything to do until we reach the state number four, the down state. Yes? Uh, 
Yes, the, uh, the HTTP, the, the, this object uh, um, monitors the state of the, the progress of the HTTP response from the server. So initially it will be here. When the re request is sent, it will be here. As soon as the server sends back and we receive in the browser, the JavaScript in the browser, we receive the, the headers, the state is transitioned from here to there. For, for, from one to two. No, this this one is a state indicated by two. That I had received. Okay, I received the others. So I called the event vendor with the current state, uh, with the ready state equal to two. I don't have any. At that point, all the headers are available, but none of the body is available yet. Then, when I start receiving the first byte of the body the state changes again to loading. So it means that some of the body has already been received, but not all of it. This is state three. And when all the body has been received, I go to state four. So if I want to process the body as a whole, I need to wait until the, the response re reaches state number four. Hmm? This is why usually we have this code. If the ready state is four, that has just been changed, is now four, then I can do what I need to do. I get from the XML HTTP the property response text, which is the string of the body of the response. And I can use it uh, in the document. For example, here into some value of an input uh, element, for example. So again, there is one time in which we are setting up the request. Then we register an event handler that later on will be called when this request is completed. Asynchronous again. Two different time scales. Now, now there's the request is sent, now the request is closed. Okay. Um, Okay, but this is just basic JavaScript. How to do that in jQuery? So again, we, if you go to jQuery documentation, that's the first version, version that talks about Ajax. And in particular, there's, uh, there are a lot of methods that are all variations of the main function called $.ajax. So actually, you have this call, dollar or jQuery.ajax, that wraps the XML HTTP request object. You don't need to see or to manage the low-level object. It's all being managed by, by this uh, jQuery object, OK? And the main uh, syntax is uh, URL, so where you want to call, to do a call with server, and a lot of settings. And the settings change, uh, there are many of them. It's a, it's a, it's a dictionary. It's a, a set of key value pairs in which you can set a lot of uh, details. For example, uh, there is one called uh, data. Data is the data that you are sending to the server in the request. If it's a GET request, this data will be put on the URL after the question mark and then called as a key value pair. If it's a POST request, this data will go into the POST body request, as always. And uh, jQuery already does all the conversions for us. Now in the HTTP, in the basic JavaScript version, we would need to put together all the strings, okay? Uh, right now, we just have a JavaScript object and let jQuery do all the work for us. Data type uh, is uh, the type of data that you are expecting. Oh, sorry, I, there's another one. Content type goes with data. I declare, I'm the, in the request side, okay? I'm composing the request object. So I'm sending you some data, and I'm telling you how this data is formed.
What is it? Is it form values? Is it uh, uh, JSON, application slash JSON? Is it application slash HTML, XML, sorry? So if I'm sending some data, I need to tell the server how to decode it. Because otherwise, you will get a string and it doesn't know how to deal with it. Can be, is it. Maybe it's an image, so it's encoded with base 64, encoding to translate that into alphabetical characters or whatever. So uh, the two go in pair, data and content. Okay. Information attached to the request. If it's a get, it's attached on the URL. If it's a post, it's attached in the body. And then I can do the reverse of asking the server the format or assuming what, the, what format will come back from the server. So I can set a data type attribute, telling the server I want to return XML, I want to return X, uh, um, HTML, I want to return JSON, or I ask you to return JSON, or in some cases I assume you are returning JSON, which is our case. And if we are telling the AJAX uh, function that the response will be in JSON, well, this function will do all the parsing for us. So we don't need to parse all the JSON. We'll just, we will just have the JavaScript object ready back. Hmm? Uh, or plain text uh, so that I will do all the processing myself. So there's a lot of uh, other attributes. You can set every detail mainly of the request that you are composing. Then for the response, you need to, to check what the server provides. Blah, blah, blah. But there is one of these attributes that is hidden in, uh, among the others, which is most, more important than every other parameter, the success. Success is a property that tells us or that points to a function that will be called when the, ex, uh, when the edge is called reach the success state. So instead of being called every time the state changes, which is very boring, we only get called when the success, the state number four, is reached. And only if it's, if it's reached without an error. So if there are errors, uh, there will be an error function. So I I, um, doing AJAX call from JavaScript just means setting a JavaScript call and a dollar dot $AJAX function call by setting all the parameters, and in particular the success function. The success function will be an event handler for doing what we need to do when the response is back. And when we do that, of course, we need to have on the Python side, on the server side, something that responds to that request. Okay? So let's try to follow the steps. Uh, I have a, a fragment of code. that uh, has an example of how to do a call with JSON data. So in, in general, we have some information. We want to encode it in JSON, send the JSON to the Python side, do some processing, and return some JSON back. So this is the pattern that we may follow. You see jQuery.ajax parenthesis of the function call, okay? Inside the parenthesis, we have a dictionary. A map, it's called in JavaScript, but same as a dictionary. Braces. Braces containing name, column, value. Name, column, value. And so I'm setting the URL. The URL can be set as a parameter or as the first uh, parameter of the, of the call is the same. I'm sending to this address, so I should have a root that takes care of the post, of this slash post address in the Python. And I'm doing a post re HTTP re request, not a get one. 
and into this post I want to attach some data. The data is expressed as a JavaScript dictionary again, a set of values, foo, value bar, bat, value quats, and so on. This json.stringy file is a built-in function in the browser that takes a JavaScript data type and converts it to a string in JSON. So I take any JavaScript object that has the data I want to send. In this case, it's an inline dictionary, a dictionary mentioned in line here, but I could prepare it with an array, with another loop, any type of, any type of computation. I have some object in JavaScript. I call JSON stringify, JSON dot string, stringify, and it will get me a string. This string is uh, embedded into the data. In this case, it's a post, so it means in the, bo in the body of the request. So I'm taking this, formatting JSON, and putting it uh, as a payload in the request. And then I declare that the response that they get from the server needs to be handled as a JSON object, as a JSON string to be, let's say, decoded. And finally, the most important attribute is success, is a function. An anonymous function that uh, defines what will happen when the response comes. In this case, the function is a parameter, ret, because it contains uh, the return value, the data returned from the server. And in particular, I could take this data, and uh, it's already, uh, since I declared JSON here, this is already an object with all the value, all the parameters. In this case, they call, in this example, they call stringify just to print it, to, to show it, but I, I don't need to do it. I just use this object. This is a, the, the pattern for doing a REST call, JSON over REST call from JavaScript. So we can imagine uh, creating in our web application a method that processes the text, that is able to do all the text processing, sophisticated inverting, and so on, whatever. And we link it to, for example, the process address, hmm? process the text. And of course, we want, uh, if we want to call it uh, in post, uh, we, want, we need uh, to declare that this root should be registered in post. Okay. So right now let's do something very simple. We, we return uh, change the quotes. Something constant. So this is a JSON string. Okay? A JSON dictionary mapping the name uh, text with the value hello it always gives us the same response, okay, every time we call it. What's wrong with you or with me? Methods. Okay. So if we, just for trying it, we call slash process, uh, 
Uh, no, this is a get. I'm trying to do a get and uh, it requests it for the, for, uh, for the post. I cannot, I can't easily do it interactively. Okay, so uh, w let's try to include this into our event handler. So let's forget about this for a moment and say that, okay, we want Right now we have some input text and we want to send it to the server and wait for the response back and use the response to fill the other text, okay? So let's paste this template. Ajax call at this point, so run the request, launch the request on the URL, which is, let, I want to see it, at the beginning. It's not post, it's called the process, okay? With method post. We want to send a JSON object with the information we have. So we can build the object, for example, by creating it outside here. So we can create uh, uh, the um, request object, request data, as uh, a dictionary with uh, a field called text uh, mapped to the text. That I just read here, okay? I'm reading something from the page and they're creating a dictionary with this. Then I could also add some other information, maybe I can have a second property here called uh, reverse, and I get it from the whether the checkbox is uh, um, selected or not. So I would again do some jQuery for selecting the uh, reverse box <coughs> element and get uh, the value of its property checked. And maybe we can do the same for flip. I hope I got the ideas right. So what I'm doing is to collect the data from the page and creating a structure in JavaScript, it's a map, with all the data that I want to send to the server. And I can send it by in putting into the data field JSONify of request data. So request data is a JavaScript object. JSONify is a string that represents this object. Syntactically, it's the same. But of course, these values are substituted with the actual ones, true or false. Okay? And the same is here. Uh, we do the post, and we expect the data, the returning data type, to be JSON. This JSON will be and we know that the JSON will contain only one attribute, text, again, it's called text again, I don't have any fantasy today, uh, that will contain the modified, let's say, string. And, so we don't do this alert, what do we do with, the re with this result? We put it into the output. It will not be text, but it would be Red text. I hope. Red is a JavaScript object. It's a map with one key, text. So I need to find the element with that key. And put it into the output function. So let's hope this works. 
But, uh, and so this one gets useless, is useless. Now, right now. So just uh, think about when these lines are, are executed. This Ajax called, call is executed at the same time as the other code here. So when the user put, presses a key, okay? And uh, uh, it will already execute the send method. So the request is already sent. So at this semicolon here, the request is sent. Right now here, we don't have anything more to do because we need to wait uh, the response. When the response will arrive, this function will be called. So everything is executed except these lines. These lines are deferred, delayed, until the response is back. And when it's back, it's the, the, its value decoded from JSON because I declared it here, that they want jQuery to decode it from JSON because I expect the response to be JSON, uh, it's, uh, it's used to complete the page. The output text here, I, I, I could not write anything here. The modified text is not available yet, it's not returned yet. So actually after sending the request, I just return. I have nothing to do, nothing more. So let's see if it works and try to see the data flowing around to, to understand it better, if it works first. So something is not, uh, is this running? So this is old. Okay, it was stopped because, for, because of this error. Reload the browser, reload. Okay. So write A. Let me, how can I clear this page? Okay, it's clear. A, B, nothing happens, so something is wrong. Uh, what I see is that from the server, I see that this post process calls are coming through. So let's check whether we are losing, where we are losing some data. Let's open the inspector just to see what happens. And uh, I type a letter. So when I type the letter, of course the typing has been uh, intercepted by jQuery and uh, the Ajax, I created the Ajax, the Ajax object call, hmm? and this uh, created a post request to the server. Let's see in detail what's in this post request. So in this post, we have, okay, these are the re request headers, the parameters, you see, params here, are the request parameters that are, this is a post, so they are embedded into the body. Text, A, B, C, D, reverse, false, flip, false. So it's the JSON string representing that structure in JavaScript. So this is correct. Then about the response, contains text, uh, hello. So the response looks legitimate, looks fine. So something is wrong with, the, because the Python server right now only answers hello. Uh, we need to check there's something wrong with the way in which we are processing the response here. So red is actually, should actually be a, Correct object, uh, let me say, uh, for example, we are in the browser, so debugging is not so easy. So we can, okay, 
for debugging JavaScript, uh, Eclipse is of no use. We need to go here. Sorry. Eh? So let's close this debugger. Script.js. And I want to put a breakpoint here. Then I type another letter. Is this ever called? No, let's see. Yeah. Okay, this function is executed here. The Ajax function is called. Right now, in sending the request, and the function is closed. But I should. Uh, sorry. I entered into the function. But it looks like the success is not uh, processed. It's never, it's never called here. I don't want to debug here now, but let's see. No, it's not called. So there is some problem with that. I will leave you. I will. So let me stop. Uh, I want to show you a, wor a working version just to, to debug it. Then there should be some small error, but uh, I find it. This is the application that I did yesterday for, which does the same thing, of course. Where, sorry. Somebody is hating me. Stop it. From this one. It's called process string. So I, I recognize it because I called it in a different way. Okay. Okay. So that. I will check the error later, but I want to show what is happening in the browser. If you go to the network, I, I type a letter. Uh, all, okay. I have this call, as I mentioned, very similar to what we just did. Uh, the input parameters are text, uh, and then the attributes reverse and flip, uh, that are both false. And the response, in this case, is already has been decoded from JSON. Okay. And if we look uh, at this project script. Uh, is actually the same. So the problem actually is not in the JavaScript, is in the way in, the, in Python we are returning JSON. So this is the same. We are, what was called the ret is now called data. And the data return, it's a dictionary, because I, I compose like that in JSON. And uh, uh, I extract the field that I want, uh, and I put it, the modified text, in the output text. Uh, so, this is the, the pattern that we always use. 
sending something in JSON in post and returning it and decoding from JSON. I only want to show you that actually this application can do what it promises. So I say hello, it writes hello in the reverse side. Or if I want, I can flip it so I can say, well, this depends on, on the encoding of the browser. Uh, it uses flipped characters. Uh, the L is not nice. Uh, so I write uh, goodbye. And it's uh, flipped down. Uh, if you want to flip it, uh, I can show you. Uh, I found uh, one project, it's called Upside Down, that includes a, uh, a method that already does all the work. So I, I didn't have to do it by hand. I, you just search for flipped text in Python, you find this, this project is called Upside Down. You search it, you can install it with, Py, with pip or just download it from GitHub and it does uh, what you want. Um, so right now we have, we concentrate ourselves on the, JS, on the JavaScript side. I only want to add a couple of uh, information about the, the Python side. So we are just to integrate nicely with JavaScript. We all the, by hiding or handling or the JSON encoding and decoding stuff. So that, it, which is, by, by the way, what I got wrong in that example. So in JavaScript, we use this template. In the request, content type, and uh, uh, data, json.stringify. In the response, data type json, and then we, in the function, in the asynchronous function, we'll get back uh, uh, the already decoded object in JavaScript. What should we do on the Python side? On Python side, we, are, we need to handle a post request with a json body. So you can do that, of course, method is post, if you want to extract the information from in JSON from the request body, you can use just this request.getJSON method call. So request is the object with all the request information, get JSON, interprets the body, interpreter decodes the JSON and creates a Python object at the, now. So here we have in this data is a Python object that matches the structure of the JavaScript object that we sent, right? So again, it's a dictionary, so we can extract text, we can check the data, the reverse and flip parameters, and if it's the case, we can reverse the string, just a, a sub, a sub slicing with the negative increment, so you do, you do the uh, you slice the strings, you take a substring uh, by, uh, with negative increments, so from the last position to the first one. This is just uh, one line of Python for reversing the string, uh, and for flipping it, I'm using that uh, upside down uh, module that I imported up there. There's a transform function that does the job. So actually the transformation done in the server, in Python. So I'm already working with Python because all the JSON have already been decoded for me. And then for returning the result, I create again a Python object with all the information that I need to return. In this case, it's again a dictionary. And instead of returning, usually we call return render template, which returns an HTML page. In, in this case, we return JSONify. JSONify, guess what? Takes uh, an object, converts it into a string, and it's very similar to what we did by hand when we returned text uh, is hello. But in addition, what I forgot to do, it sets uh, the response header correctly with the MIME type for JSON. Hmm? so that the, the, the jQuery on the other side can, uh, can reply. So actually, 
we have uh, that there are two main concepts or three today. The first is in jQuery, everything is nested. And in every nesting level, you are declaring a function that will get called later asynchronously. First point. Second point, if you want to do some conversation with the server, you need the, the Ajax function call. You call a method on the server. Third point, uh, how to handle JSON in the call. For sending data, we use sending from JavaScript, JSON stringify, content type, application JSON. This data, so it's, tra it's transformed from a JavaScript object into a string. On the server, we receive that data with request.json. So, JavaScript object, JSON string, sending to the HTTP request, uh, extracting from the request, and constructing a Python object. Then do stuff. Do what you need to do. When you want to return, build an object containing all the return information and return JSONify of the object. This returned object will be passed. At that point, this function will be called, and the parameter of this function will be set, will be decoded from JSON, transformed into a JavaScript object, and passed as an object to the function. And so, at that point, you can, again, do stuff with the value of the result. Yes? Yes, stringify and uh, JSONify do more or less the same thing. Oh, okay. hmm? Yes, they they take a, a, an object and they return a string. Hmm? The difference is, is that JSONify is a method uh, from Flask uh, that already sets the headers uh, to the to the correct MIME type, hmm? and in the request we need to set it by hand, but it's a minor issue. Okay, and always remember that these instructions will be run much later when you don't expect them. Because maybe the user has already typed three or four different characters. You see that it takes some time to catch up. Right now I'm on the same machine, so it's actually 20, 30, 40 milliseconds. But if you are on a different server, you say that you are, the user, the important part is that the user is never blocked. The user is only blocked, so it cannot do anything, only while these instructions are running. Okay, very, very, oh, sorry, this one. The event handler is taking the input, uh, extracting the value, and doing this call, and sending the request. Then here we return to the user. So immediately the user can do other things. So we only take uh, not the time of the request, only the time of setting it up, of setting the request up and sending it. So a couple of milliseconds. Then all the waiting time is done in the background. Is the XHR, XML HTTP request object that is, is alive and monitors the, the, the response. When the response is get back, this function is already is called again. So in this time, we are already, we are again, sorry, blocking the user. Because the JavaScript must execute these codes. But again, you, we already have all the data ready. We just have to put it in the right places. So we are doing a bit of computation here, a bit of computation there. And in the middle, we just wait and let the asynchronous background objects do their work. Okay. Usually it takes 20 or 25 liters of coffee to get into this uh, uh, mechanism, but uh, once uh, you get it, uh, it's always the same. Hmm? Mainly you need to concentrate on uh, the interface, in w which data is in and which data goes out for every call, and then finding the right places to call it. 
Thank you. It's done enough harm for today. Hmm.